Everybody does year and review stories, but rather than dwell on the past, I've got the guts to predict the future. Jim Cameron for Talking Transportation, commentary and analysis on getting around in Connecticut. And here is what will happen in 2016 in the world of transportation. Metro North. Slowly but surely, this railroad is going to dig itself out of the trench of quagmire that it's been in since the Bridgeport, Spuytendivel, and Valhalla crashes. On-time performance will hold strong even through the winter, thanks to the dependable new M8 cars and pretty much milder weather. Ridership will continue to climb. That will cause further crowding and, in some cases, standing room-only conditions on rush hour trains. The Stamford Garage. Well, after waiting for its chosen developer and Governor's Malloy campaign contributor, JHN Group, to sign a contract for two and a half years after being tapped for this massive TOD project, the Department of Transportation, I predict, will pull the plug on the deal and replace the old parking garage on its own with taxpayer money. Tolls and Taxes. Governor Malloy's quest for $100 billion to pay for his 30-year transportation plan will prove universally unpopular when his Transportation Funding Task Force finally issues its recommendations, originally due after Labor Day, when that report comes out sometime in January. I predict the panel will call for higher gasoline and sales taxes, tolls, motor vehicle fees, and a slew of other unpopular ideas. The legislature will react by slashing the governor's unrealistic plans, reluctant to have its fingerprints on anything the task force suggests. Eminent domain. Governor Malloy will try again, I predict, to impose state control over transit-oriented development, reintroducing his stealth bill to create a transit corridor development agency, all of whose members he would get to appoint, with the power to seize any land within a quarter mile of a railroad station by eminent domain. Flying. Returning to profitability, the airlines, I predict, will continue to squeeze more seats onto fewer flights, making flying a true ordeal. Frequent flyer rewards will be harder to get, as desperate passengers will actually pay to ride in business or first class, leaving fewer seats for upgrades. Amtrak. A seller will become increasingly popular, allowing the railroad to raise business fares. Last-minute seats will be harder to get, but the railroad will still refuse to expand service by buying new rail cars for the Acela fleet. Traditional Northeast Corridor trains, however, will still be jammed as the railroad tries to compete with discount bus carriers. Highways. With an improving economy and inadequate rail station parking, still, people will jam I-95 and the Merritt Parkway in even larger numbers, increasing commuting times even further. Gasoline prices will continue to decline thanks to cheap oil, sending even more people out onto the roads. Uber and Lyft. State and city authorities, I predict, will come down hard on car services like Uber, imposing on them the same regulations and taxes now borne by taxis and limousines. After leveling the playing ground, so to speak, Uber-type services will have to raise fares, passing those costs on to passengers. Will all of my predictions come true? Well, check back in a year and we'll see. Meantime, happy traveling in 2016. I'm Jim Cameron for Talking Transportation.